My name is Mary Rose Monkowski. I'm a UI artist at Portalarium, and UI stands for user interface. So in games, that's primarily the interactive elements that you're working with as you're playing the game. I'm Jason Hughes. I'm a studio head of Steel Play Games. I'm, I'm cross-discipline at this point because I'm, I'm running a studio. I have several employees. We're pitching products all the time to different publishers. We're you know, managing uh, four or five projects simultaneously with a relatively small teams. So I guess I, I do a lot of coding, but I don't do as much coding as I used to. Uh, uh, I'm Tess Snyder. Uh, I am... Uh, I've been a game programmer professionally for about nine years, and I was programming in other industries prior to that. Uh, I am currently self-employed. Uh, I run my own small company doing contracting and independent development. Uh, I'm Sherry Grainer Ray. I started in the game industry in 1989. Uh, I've worked uh, as everything from a line designer up to uh, head of product development, head of my own studio. I currently am the studio design director for Shell Games. Uh, I'm a I'm a hardcore gamer. I'm a 20 to 30 hour a week gamer. If I'm not playing computer games, I'm playing paper games. Uh, so I'm, I'm a really hardcore gamer. I am a designer. I'm not a programmer. I'm not an artist, producer. I, I'm a designer and that's what I've always been. Uh, I'm also the founder of Women in Games International. Uh, I served as their executive director for 10 years and I am the author of Gender Inclusive Game Design, Expanding the Market. So I'm very interested in diversity in our workforce. To, uh, but when I was at UT, actually, I studied computer science, and um, part of what got me excited about games was just that it's this—it's this wonderful sort of meld of all these different disciplines. Where, and especially when it's a, a single programmer that's doing their own thing. Today, you see that on mobile, uh, like hands, handsets and, and smartphones and things, is the the one guy or the two guys that sit down and say, "I'm going to make this awesome game," and that's how it used to be back long before it became the giant industry that it is today. Um, but you got to do a little bit of art, you got to do design, you got to code everything yourself, you got to figure out how to make bad UIs, I mean, <laughs> you get to do all these things and, and figure out what your strengths are. And, and some people kind of gravitated one way, I gravitated toward programming. I knew I wanted to be a game programmer when I was a kid. I, I would like, you know, make little text adventures in basic and stuff like that. I knew that was what I wanted to do and then I strayed from the path for a long, long time. I was an electrical engineering major for a while and eventually found my way back around to computer science. But once I got my computer science degree, there was no obvious path to getting into the game industry. I, uh, I didn't know what to do, how to go about doing that. I, uh, it wasn't obvious. There weren't even any graphics courses at my university. Uh, there was no way to learn that aside from you know, digging that stuff out with yourself. And we didn't have Google back in those days. You know? <laughs> the internet was a very different landscape, so it was a lot harder to go and, and self-research things like that. You would buy a lot of books and, when you're a college student, you're already spending a ton of money on books. Um, so when I got out, I ended up working in other industries. I was working in you know, telecom and defense and all these various other things. But I always kind of knew in the back of my head I really wanted to be doing games. Uh, so I started networking, talking to people in the industry, doing a lot of research on the industry, figuring out what I needed to know to be a game programmer, and studying that stuff on my own, and working on little demos and projects and things like that, and just really getting, doing all of my footwork, figuring out what I needed to do to do that job. But even then, I was kind of reluctant, because I'm going to take a pay cut if I'm going to do that. What am I going to do? I'm going to take a pay cut. And one day, I got really sick with the ERP system I was working on, and I just didn't want to go to work. And I said, you know what? It's probably time. So um, I kind of had a circuitous path. Uh, basically, I've been an exhibit designer for about seven or eight years, which I love doing. But the market completely changed in 2008 with the implosion of the economy. I was pretty much like, I'm finished with um, exhibit design and really figuring out what I wanted to do. And I kind of sat down with myself and said, OK, what are the things that I love about my career? And what am I looking for in my next one? So one of them was working in 2D and 3D. Absolutely love doing that. Second thing was, um, because I was affiliated with the games industry so much, it was very much a communal working environment. And where I worked, because I worked from designer with sales staff to engineer to shop, it was very linear. And so I didn't really work across with a lot of other people on a collaborative project. And I really wanted to do that as opposed to what I had been doing. And then the third thing is, I just like to hang out with game people. They're way more fun. Um, they love what they do, and there's really not a fine line between work and play, and 
and I wanted to be a part of that. So I moved here, I got an internship at UTV True Games, which is no longer here, um, which is another theme in the game industry. Um, <laughs> And uh, started out with just propping out the world in um, a hero engine, which is the engine they were working in. It was a fantasy MMO. And uh, pretty much worked my way into a bunch of different things because they kind of didn't know what to do with me because I could do a lot of different things and they had a small staff. And I kind of fell into UI because I was tired of hearing the programmers and these, um, all of the forums say that they couldn't stand our UI. So I'm like, let me try that out. And really fell in love with it because it was very much like industrial design. It was very methodical and um, creative, but it was also very technical as far as how things worked, how people think, and how you move through an actual interface. Well, I went to a technical school in Florida called Full Sail to do uh, you know, a, a specialized associate's degree just in film study and, and design. And uh, I thought, you know, that, that'll work out fine. I got there and uh, walked into a lab full of, at the time, $50,000 computers, and people were animating on them, and I went, yes, this is what I want to do. <laughs> so I quickly went back up and changed what I was there for, and uh, switched over to a gen general digital media degree. So we studied all kinds of, you know, uh, like DVD ROM burners were, Twenty thousand, like everything was, you know. Now you can buy everything at Walmart for five hundred dollars, and at the time there was no access to any of that stuff. So um, we started uh, digital media creation and interactivity, and uh, I got a little bit of the game, but animation was where my love was. So I just continued on that path, and and uh, eventually ended up in games. Look to yourself and decide what you think is right and, and go for it. And really, especially today, geez, it's so much easier to get into the games industry because you don't need anybody else. You can do it yourself. Um, if that's what you want to do, then just charge after it. If you don't know something, find somebody who does and have them teach you. People are very willing. Those math classes are actually useful for something. They may not have told you that. They're really bad at telling people that, but yeah, they're useful. <laughs> you do the thing you like because you'll do a better job of it. Two things. I would tell myself, never give up. If this is what you want to do, hang in there because the forces will be against you and it will, you'll have a lot of people tell you that you can't make a career out of this and this can't be something that you actually could do for the rest of your lives, but hang in there, do it. And the next thing I would tell myself is network, 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 network. Do it now, do it often, do it every day. Network, because that's how you'll get into the industry and that's how you'll stay there. Um, I was working at Sony Online Entertainment and I was the content lead on Star Wars Galaxies. And I was sitting <laughs> <laughs> And if you catch me sometime over beer and pretzels, I'll tell you lots of great stories. <laughs> I won't say them right now. <laughs> but I was sitting in my office and I heard a couple of the designers that were on my team, I heard them in the hallway and the voices started to get a little loud and I thought, uh-oh. -uh. Got a little louder, and I thought, yeah, okay, something's going on. It got really loud, and I thought, yeah, okay, some kind of fight's going on. I better go see what's going on. So I got in the hallway, and I go, okay, guys, what's okay? Wait, 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 what's happening? They're actually arguing over whether or not the player should be able to learn to speak Jawa. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I love what I do. I like the fact that we're making something creative and fun, and even our bugs are kind of fun in this industry. It's not like you're going to lose two million dollars because you, you know. Uh -oh had a number wrong somewhere. It, it's, you know, instead people's heads are popped off or the ground is plaid or something like that, you know? <laughs> the, the, thing that the thing that's best about being in the games industry in general is that everybody's so creative. Everybody has so many different hobbies and they're constantly, they're educating themselves about things, something they've never heard of, they become an expert in a week later. These are, these are the kinds of people that gravitate toward the games industry because your day-to-day -day job is not sitting on an assembly line. It's being created. I like the technology and the artistry. I mean, the balance of those two things, it's so fun to work with both sides of your brain. Um, and I get to do that every day, and they pay me for it. <laughs> oh, man, I don't think there's a single day that I don't get up in the morning looking forward to going to my job. And I worked outside the game industry for a number of years before I got started in the game industry. And I had a lot of days where I didn't want to go to work in the morning. And I don't think I've had one day like that since I started in games. I love what I do. So as my grandmother used to say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And that's the way I feel about it. I don't work, I play, and it's incredibly lots of fun. Exactly 
with you are saying instability can be really scary. The kind of the average thought is you change jobs about every three years. Uh, either the company goes out from underneath you, the project that you're on doesn't get fully funded, or it goes flat, or something happens, uh, all the leadership in the company changes, they let your team go. Nine times out of ten, it's not anything you did, it's just the instability of the industry. So you get prepared that about every three years, you're going to change jobs, and you're going to move, and sometimes it's going to be across the country, and sometimes it's going to be, and sometimes you're going to go for a couple months without any work. So networking is a real good way to, uh, to mitigate some of that. I cannot tell you enough how important it is to be active in the IGDA. That will be your lifeline many times to keep your fingers in the game industry, to stay in touch with people who are in the industry, to stay active. The quality of life stuff, I think, is the other thing I would tell myself in the past. Is, uh, it is a game, and no matter what pressure you imagine from a teammate or a team member, if they choose to stay and work for 24 hours straight and jeopardize their relationships, it shouldn't affect you. So it's great to, to take opportunities and work really hard and, and love what you do, just don't let it destroy the rest of your life, because that's also important. And when the game ships and either sells well or doesn't, you have to live in that space between the projects. Actually, the coolest part about the industry is the, the number of background, like different backgrounds people end up coming in with. Um, you know, but knowing more programming is never going to be detrimental to your life going forward. It's way better, <laughs> right? Because there's, that is the new language of the world. Is. Because the other thing is, the average lifespan in the game industry is something like five years. You need something else to fall back on if it is not what you really want to do. Um, you know, I kind of figured it out twice. <laughs> and I'm in a field that I don't even have a degree for. But I got a lot of good building blocks from that. So if you know you want to do something, I would say finish your undergrad degree if you haven't, no matter what it is, mm -hmm. but work on your portfolio piece to show that's where your yeah. passion is, because everyone knows at 18 you don't know what you want to do when you turn 22 or 21. Um, some of the best designers I've had have had some of the most eclectic degrees. One of my best designers I've had had a degree in philosophy, um, which I used to tease if I say philosophy majors are only uh, good for producing more philosophy majors. Um, <laughs> but actually, he was, he was a very good designer. What I look for, when I'm looking at designers is, I want, I'd like to see a finished college degree, but I really don't care what it's in. What I really look for is synthesis thinking. I need people who can look at a huge, broad spectrum of things, and f disparate things, and find how it applies to the game that we're actually producing. Go on the web and start searching for just jobs. Just find out what they're looking for. Yeah. Because you're in this really good place right now where you're still in school, and you still are somewhat malleable as what other things you can look for, and you need to know what your end game is. If that's what you want to get to, oh, I didn't know they wanted me to know that. Well, I can easily pick this up here. In the games industry, a portfolio is the most important thing besides a resume. Your resume is great. It's good that you have one. Make sure it's checked for spelling errors, but you need to show a portfolio. I, when I was unemployed last year, <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't. I'm going to make a game. I'm going to make a flash game because I need to learn action scripting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let's be self-referential. How to be an unemployed artist. So I had like the good route, the bad route. It was like a basic decision tree game. And the whole studio had employed it, so I knew a bunch of un unemployed programmers. So they helped me with the object-oriented programming when I needed a few variables and stuff like that. And it was just fun because A, I was having a good time thinking of my ideas. And I was be making a game and seeing that was a great portfolio piece. Mm -hmm. And it's you can use whatever these things are. You don't have to be the best at one of those things, but the fact that you tried and you have something up on a website, oh my god, that you're way yeah. ahead of everyone else. Yep. Because here's what's gonna happen if you want this industry. You work you work your butt off in school, you'll get really good grades and you'll do everything you can to get your grades up and then you'll hunt and peck and poke around and find yourself an internship somewhere where you basically work for beer and pizza and you work and they'll put you in QA where you work on the same broken game for you know eight months and it's still broken and you're working on it for ten and twelve hours a day and it, you know until you're singing in your sleep and then finally finally they'll they'll tap you for a junior programming position or a junior design position and and you're just so excited because you're finally going to actually have your first paid job in there and you'll move up and you'll be making levels for Hello Kitty. <laughs> and no, you can't put chain guns in Hello Kitty. No matter how bad you want to, you can't. And so that's where the industry is. You've got to be willing to be flexible and to move with the industry. You've got to love what we do as an industry, not I just want to recreate Halo or I just want to do another, you know,
Modern Warfare are one of those games. I, you have to love the kind of entertainment we create for our audiences, and you have to be willing to try to get into you. The, the fun of this is getting into your audience's head and figuring out how to make that the very best Hello Kitty those eight-year-old girls have ever seen. And also, iteration. As an artist and a creative type, actually a programmer, I can't tell you how many iterations you're going to go through. So you have to really enjoy the process, or else if you're always going for the end goal, the end goal happens so fleetingly, and, so, and there's so much more of the process. And if you can get yourself looking and enjoying that part and the iteration and, and, and all the other things that go around with it, you're going to be significantly happier. Yeah, is that nobody ever goes into the games industry for money. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't think that just because it's billions and billions of dollars are being dumped into entertainment every year and, it, and it's all going into the games industry that you're going to get a piece of it. Yeah. Because most people don't. I mean, realistically, yeah. you, you trade a, maybe a better salary somewhere else for a lifestyle. That's what you're getting as part of the benefits package. You work, maybe make less money for your skill set than if you just went off and work at a bank. And then your ability to execute on other people's ideas without getting your feelings hurt and without, you know, if you lose a week's worth of work because the idea changed, those things keep you employed. Mm -hmm. And that's when your ideas count because your, your creativity comes into play in your idea on how to take something that someone wants and turn that into something that someone wants to play. Is, is what is valuable. But you start at a company and all your ideas are theirs.